Hello, so this is going to be a, a walkthrough of the new Dartfish 360S software. So it's got a significant update in the last few weeks and um, I just wanted to walk through the sort of key aspects of it. So the 360S is part of a, a wider sort of mobile friendly solution from Dartfish. So they've obviously introduced a lot of apps recently. They've always had excellent existing software. And then these products or platforms now sort of integrate all together. So I'm going to contrast on this one here in black, the 360S. So it's a software that would, you would have on your, on your PC. It's uh, two apps and then it's smart cloud technology. So online, online storage and online solutions. Um, I'm not going to go into the apps here now. There's, there's plenty of really good videos on, on those specifically. I'm going to deal mainly with the software and the smart cloud. And just, just to deal with the cloud side of things up front is when you say cloud to most people, they think of um, these sort of things. So Dropbox and Google Drive are probably two of the most popular ones. And they're extremely cheap. And personally, I, I use both of them for different applications. The difficulty is when you're dealing with video is that those services do run into some difficulties and, and can be limited. They're fine if you just want to share one file with another person. But I think now, and certainly in Darfur's case, there are better, more effective solutions that are out there. And that's where the smart cloud differs from storage. So I suppose when I mention online storage or the Dartfish My Cloud, it's, it's to get out of the frame of mind that it's just a, a storage device. It's just somewhere to plonk files um, that, that other people can see. And hopefully I'll explain that now as we go. So just a couple of limitations with the tools like Dropbox. And I'm just going to use that one as an example, but they're all, they're all very similar. Um, so I'm just picking picking on that one as an example. So just to explain a little bit, if, if you have a four gig file, video file on your, your desktop and you upload that to Dropbox, you have to upload all four gig. So you have to push four gig through your broadband and your upload speed, and that's what then goes into your Dropbox storage account. Now the storage itself is so cheap that the file size doesn't really affect it. it like it, it is really, really cheap. But the difficulty is you have to push four gig upload and not all countries and not all regions have uh, great broadband for that. The other aspect is that people on the other end then have to view a four gig file. So whether they're trying to watch that through a, a tablet or a mobile phone or even on their PC, they're having to view a four gig file and therefore process a four gig file, which is quite big by video standards on the internet and, and the, the quality of that video will be as it was on your machine. And that, that's a lot to ask. For example, YouTube process the video. So, so what they do is they convert the video into a couple of different formats, and then they would serve the best format depending on the, the internet speed or the device of the user. Now, we're a long way from YouTube's technology and things like that um, being available to, to everybody in, in a commercial sense. But that's something that YouTube does in the background that people wouldn't be aware of. So it's not just as simple as pushing a four gig file up onto Dropbox. You will, you will eventually, I think, run into difficulties if the video quality is, is quite good on, on your end. The other thing to think about is the file format. So whatever file format you upload to Dropbox, it stays as that. So you could potentially run into difficulties where different phones, different tablets, different devices can't read the particular format that your software produced the video in. Okay, And it's just something to consider. Um, it's not a massive issue, but it, but it does arise from time to time. So the advantage of the My Dartfish Smart Cloud is that the video processes. So if I've got a four gig file locally on my hard drive, when I upload that to Dartfish TV, it gets processed. So it gets slightly reduced and then uploaded. Okay, so that does a couple of things. One, it means I'm not trying to upload all four gigabytes. I'm trying to upload a, a much smaller file. Now, the exact specifications do change from time to time, so I haven't included them in this video, but it's a significant reduction in the file size of the video. And the other thing it does is it processes it into a web-friendly format, an industry standard format, so that almost any device, tablet, anything like that, any browser that you log on, you'll be able to view the video. So file formats is not something you need to worry about. The other thing to note about a file on Dropbox is it's just a raw file. So if you have loaded a 60 or 90 minute game, well then that's what goes on. And it's a raw video file from start to finish. Where with something like My Dartfish, it's searchable. So in this small example here, and I'll go into a real example now in a minute, 
this small example here is I've uploaded a game that's tagged and you can see the tags here on the right hand side and that's searchable so it means anybody who has access to this video whether it's the players the management the backroom team anything like that they can search the file for their name for a particular event for an opposition player anything like that so it's much smarter in terms of being able to interact with the video rather than just get access to a raw video file and I think that's important to distinguish that it's not just about storage, it's about being a smarter technology and being more inclusive or more uh, user friendly in terms of getting buy in from players and backroom teams. Okay, so that, they're the major differences. And I suppose just to reiterate the point is in most cases, analysts would use software, apps, and cloud technology, but often they can be from different providers. And the solutions work fine. But in Darkfish's case, they've now covered those three bases. And the advantage of that is you're completely integrated. So you're dealing with one company, and obviously all the parts of the puzzle talk to each other. Um, and th there's no interruption from that point of view. So, it, so it's, it's great that it fulfills all three of those. As I said, I'm not really going to get into the details of the apps. In this case, there are some good videos on that. I'm going to deal with it, the new 360 software and the cloud from here on in. Okay, so this is the 360S, as I said, um, and there are a couple of different applications for it that I'll, I'll cover as, as we go through now. But without further ado, let's jump into the actual 360 software. Okay, so you can see this is the user interface, and um, you have a couple of different settings, so essential, library only, view, and the analyze, which is when you're just analyzing the game. So I, I'm gonna flick between those through, those three. There are some nice videos um, on the learning TV channel that Dartfish have created. So there's, at the moment, there's these four videos which are really good. And they'll go through the specifics of, of how to do all of that. This is more just an overview of, of what's possible. But I, I'd recommend you check out those, those videos at some stage. So just to walk through what's here. So I have a, a local file. So this is just a video file that I had locally on my PC. I click on the little plus button to add it in, so you can just select the file. So we can just pick this one as an example, and that file comes in and is now part of my, my library of files that are available. Okay, So it's not online, it's not anywhere, it's just a video file that's now sitting on, on my PC. So I'm going to use this, this is France v Germany from the Euros, and I'm going to use this as an example. Okay. And this is probably the first scenario that, that I, would, I would say, if you're a coach of a local team, you have access to video footage, but you don't want to go into the big rigmarole of, of analyzing and getting statistics and, and doing all that type of stuff, which the software will obviously do quite well, the, the Connect Plus software. But you just want to be able to pick out five or 10 or 15 key moments from the game and be able to present that back to your team. And this is, this is an ideal solution for you. So there's no tagging panel set up. There's no... Um, design or anything goes into it. You simply play the video and you have different speed controls and everything. I'm going to just drag it along, but as soon as you see something happen in the video, for example, let's take the throw in, I press the add event at current position. Okay, so it'll add that event at that exact moment in the game. And then what I can do is I can go and label it. So we can call it a France throw in. Um, and I can do some other things. So I wanted to start sooner. So you'll see these are the, the timings. So this is when it starts and this is how long it lasts. And again, I can edit those. Um, so let's say I wanted it to start 2 minutes 50 and I wanted it to last 20 seconds as an example. Okay, and you can obviously play around with these. I can click this button to replay the event. Okay, so you'll see I see maybe the defensive shape of the German team for a throw in. Uh, where our defenders are, things like that. Okay, so I get all of this included in my 20 seconds, and then the video will just simply stop when that 20 seconds ends. Okay, so I see the phase of play up until that that moment. Okay, so they, they clear the ball. All right, I can also add a color, and I'll show you why the color might be important um, later on. So I'm just going to add that as blue, um, and that's that's how you do it. That's how you would add an event to the current position in the video. So again, I can just go back and play the video. And when I see something else of note, I would again go back up to my tag event button and label it, you know, as defensive shape, for example. Uh, let's call it good. Okay, and because it's France, let's add 
it to blue, and I'm going to this time star it. So this basically is top rated. So again, it'll allow me search for that later on. Okay. So again, that's how you would work your way through the game. And just when you see something of note, you can tag the button and add in the key position, okay, or the event button. So if I drag it along, there are other, so if you don't want an actual video, so something that lasts 10 or 15 seconds, you might want just a snapshot of time. So again, if I just pause the video here, um, where's the ball? So, okay, so the ball is here. So let's say I'm just looking at that as an example, as a still image of our, you know, counter attack shape or defensive shape. So what I can do here is add in a still image. So I press the camera button and it gives me a still shot. And you see it's called still shot and has a slightly different icon here, okay? So here I can start to do my draw tools. So the same as you might see on any popular sort of TV program, you can start to add in some of your draw tools. So let's say I want to look at the defensive shape of France. Uh, let's make it blue. Okay, or I want to highlight some key players for Germany. Let's put down an orange in this case so we can see it. I want to, you know, undo that. Sorry, so I want to highlight the um, the width that the German team have as a as a case in point. Okay, and I'm happy with that. So let's say German width. Okay, so I'm delighted with that, and let's. Okay, so they're my, my key events. So you would work your way through the game and tag the various aspects that you see. And I'm delighted with that. So, so now what, what would be the, the key thing would be if I'm having an offline face-to-face -face meeting with the players, what I can do is come along and in the magnifying here, I can search. So let's say I just want to look for anything I have with France in it. So there's the three events that are there. And for example, I can go up here and just hit play all events. And it'll play just those three events. And again, if I go to full screen, we can watch it in full screen. Okay. And I can skip between clip to clip. I can play. I can do slow-mo. I can add extra draw tools at this stage if I want to, if I want to highlight where a player should or shouldn't have stood. Okay. You can just plug that machine into a projector and play that in front of a team. Okay. No online cloud storage, no anything. Very simple, very easy to do, just picking out key events. Okay, and being able to filter them. And again, just while I added the colors and, and the various things, these buttons here all act as filters. So for example, I press the orange, it'll find me the two orange events. So it finds me the still shot and the Germany cross, as an example. If I hit the blue, it finds me the blue events. Or if I click on the, the star, it will find me anything that I rated as a, as a top rated event because I want to show those, okay? So again, I, I think it's it's really straightforward. We've imported a video, tagged some key events, we're able to search and replay them on our own machine. Obviously, the advantage with the cloud technology is that if we want to share that remotely with our team, and it could be the backroom team or the players or both, we have the ability to just simply upload that game. Okay, so I can come in here and click publish to TV. I would sign in to whatever whatever channel or whatever video I want to upload it to uh, and, I, and I can put it online that way. Okay. So that's the first way and then I can share that with my team. So I have a couple of examples, um, I suppose, pre-made um, that are worth showing. So if I come back over to here, so you'll see I have a full game, Donegal v Dublin quarterfinal, and it's, it's completely tagged. So you'll see here I have thousands of events, okay, or a thousand events listed all down here. And again, I've just shared that online with my team. They can come in and search for, you know, if there's a Michael on the team, he can type in his name, and there's all the events that Michael is involved in, okay? And he can just play all, and it will skip through from event to event to event. And it'll play each one of those one after the other um, that he's involved in. Or I want to come along and I want to play the kickouts. Again, I can type in kickout and look through all the kickouts, okay? Or whatever event it is that you want to find. So that's all shared through the My Darkfish Smart Cloud. And that's why it's really, really handy to be able to do because 
you're now as an analyst, you're not stuck in having to burn DVDs or memory sticks or anything or e try and email clips or upload individual clips. You can just upload the tagged game and then that's searchable online, okay, from a team. And you can do that all from within the software, okay. So if I look at this where 360 really comes into its own is that the fact that it's, it's synchronized with what's online. So this game here that I've already uploaded is also in my 360 software, okay? So you can see that, it, that it's here. And if I take all my clickers off, you should see that I have my list of events all down through here, okay? So this game that's now online is also available on my, on my machine as well, okay? And you'll, you'll see that with the, the little icon, so it has a cloud icon to show that, it, that it's online. It also means that any changes I make here will get synchronized with what's online. All right. So for example, if I change or edit any of the events in here or I add new ones in, that will get synchronized with the, with the video. So for example, if I add in a, a new event at this point, so we'll just call it new test event. When I go to synchronize later on, I'll show you that that will appear in this list here. Okay. which is really useful from if you have assistant coaches or assistant analysts or just other people who are who want to help out with the analysis is that if they're signed in in un, under the one account is that they're able to access that video file on their own machine and add in their own coaching points so if you have a defense coach or a backs coach or an attacks coach they're able to add to the initial analysis that's already done Okay, which can be really useful in one, spreading the load, but two, getting more expertise involved in, in analyzing the game. And they might be looking at a, an event that you've already tagged, but they want to add in the still shot of why something happened or ask the players a question or anything like that. So they're able to do that again with, with the software. So just to give you an example of, of what I've already done from from this game. So what I, what I did in this case was I did a search. So if I go back up here, uh, I think it was these, yeah. So I searched for this color. So I just marked five or six events with this color. And I had create movie. So I'd named it as five points, Dublin v Donegal. I'd chosen the collection of where it was to go. And I hit create movie. Now I've already prepared this, but that basically what it does is it just takes those five or six events and it puts them online and again available for other people to go and look. So this isn't the full game. This is a separate movie just of those five or six events. Okay. So here's one I prepared earlier. So if I go back to my videos, we will see the five points uh, file there or video file there. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. So you can see the, the points are there. Okay. Now, suppose I want to highlight something particular in in this video okay so at this point maybe i want to add a still shot and do some draw tools or something like that so here's the video file again synchronized so one two three four five okay that's the file i've uploaded and i've now discovered you know at this point here i would like to annotate the video or draw something on top of the video so i want to highlight something to my players okay so i'm going to add a still shot I'm gonna maybe do an arrow. Let's make it yellow so it looks at the team. Let's put that in there. Let's add in text to say, get across quicker, okay? So I'm happy with that. That's my still shot added in. I'm gonna name it, um, sorry, just click a stick. So I'm gonna name it as, um, of shape just as an example okay so you can imagine this is either the analyst yourself the coach another member of the backroom team somebody who has access to this video who just wants to make this you know point to that player that, that this should be done okay so again we've added that in it's at that point I'm happy so what I can come back now and do is hit synchronize and anything that's on here will get updated with what's online so I'm going to hit synchronize and while that does it, I'm going to pause the video and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like online. 
you can see here it's just it's going through the synchronizing process it's just making sure that everything on here aligns with what's online okay so i will pause this now and then show you what it looks like once that okay so that's fully synchronized now so now if i go on to my web browser and i just refresh that what we should see are those five events and there's the still image of the defense show. okay so again that's how other coaches or even yourself if you've tagged a game and uploaded and now you want to add information to it everything that you do in the 360 software with a, a synchronized video gets synchronized online and the same if i go back to my big match file um, which was this one if you remember we added in a, an event i can't remember how we called it but event test or something like that that's what we added in as so once this this video loads and then the tags will load i'll just go back to 360 here and we can check check the search here so yeah so new test event should be in there so there's my new test event Okay, so again, really nice piece of software. Um, because everything is synced, if I go on now to my mobile phone or my tablet, anything that I've done is, is all synchronized across all the devices. Okay, so just to reiterate, if you are an individual coach and you just want to look through video and you're happy enough to tag simply each event as you see and label it, and then you can filter and replay back to your team in an offline environment, or obviously you can upload the games and make them available for the squad to log in and, and, and have a look at. Um, and likewise, then, if you create smaller videos, so if I filter these three events, I can create a movie and I can upload just those three events online and share them with the relevant people. Okay, And as we've seen, we can add in the various still shots and, and things like that. And because everything gets synced, it's a much smarter way of doing it rather than having to send out individual clips or send out individual um, events and things like that. You can have everything synchronized all in one. So that's the 360S. As I said, I check out the individual uh, tutorials that are put up there and also have a look around that channel because there's good descriptions of the, of the apps, the Dartfish Express and Dartfish Note. Um, but I just wanted to do a quick wa walkthrough of what the new 360s software is like and if you want to go on to the dartfish website you can if you go on to dartfish.com you can sign up for a free trial so if you go into pricing there 360s you can sign up for a free trial and have a play around with that yourself so definitely something worth checking out good leap forward